This tutorial lesson will describe how to write a skeleton equation from a word or phrase that describes the reactants and products of a chemical reaction. In doing this, look for key words. Key words such as produces, combines with. These help signify the reactants and the products. When reading carefully, it states the metal calcium is combined with aqueous silver nitrate implying that these are the reactants. It further states that it produces silver metal and aqueous calcium nitrate, emphasizing these are the products. Recall that an arrow separates the reactants from the products in a chemical reaction. The skeleton equation is simply an equation that describes the correct formula for each reactant and each product in the reaction. In this case, our reactants are the metal calcium. The element calcium is simply represented by the symbols Ca. Most metals are typically a solid, so we could add this information to it. The other reactant described is aqueous silver nitrate. This is an ionic compound. This lesson assumes that you know how to identify charges and write formulas for ionic compounds at this point. The ion silver always has a one plus charge with this symbol, Ag. The symbols for nitrate ion are simply NO3 carrying a one minus charge. Therefore, the symbol or the formula for silver nitrate is represented by one silver ion and one nitrate ion. It states that it is aqueous or dissolved in water, so we will give it the symbols accordingly. Now let us look at the products. It describes one of the products as silver, the metal silver. Therefore, silver, the symbols for the element silver, Ag, would be used. And again, since it is a metal, typically most metals are solid. And the other product would be calcium nitrate. Calcium being an ion carrying a two plus charge, nitrate, as before, carries a one minus charge. Therefore, the symbols for calcium nitrate require one calcium ion to be bounced against two nitrate ions. The fact that it states that this is aqueous we could also assign the symbols AQ to this product. The skeleton equation is now written in red. The information in purple that is being erased is simply the charges of the ions that help us write the formulas for the products. A skeleton equation is not a balanced equation. Therefore, the quantities of ions or atoms may not necessarily be the same on the reactant and product sides. In looking carefully at this, we can see that there is one nitrate or NO3 ion on the reactant side, however, two on the product side. That's okay because we have written what is called the skeleton equation and have not written a balanced equation. Let us look at another example. Again, look for keywords that separate reactants from products. When reading this example, oxygen gas reacts with iron metal, this reveals the reactants are oxygen gas and iron. The phrase it forms tells us what the products are. Following it forms, solid iron three oxide. Oxygen gas. Oxygen, the element, can never be written as single atoms of L. Again, a reminder, there are seven elements in class, we call them the genuine elements that must be written as diatomic molecules. They're the elements that end in gen or ein, a simple way to remember them. Since it says that oxygen gas reacts with iron metal, we need the symbols for iron. We can add the information that oxygen is a gas and iron is typically a solid. We now have the symbols for our reactants. Our product is known as iron three oxide. 
This is an ionic compound, therefore we will need ion charges to write its formula. Iron Roman numeral 3 indicates iron with the 3 plus charge. If you recall, iron could also form a 2 plus charge. That would then be called iron 2 and not iron 3. Oxide always carries a 2 minus charge. In order to make a compound with a net charge of 0, the ion counts of iron and oxygen have to make a net charge of zero, meaning the plus amount and minus amount from each ion have to contribute to a net charge of zero. We've discussed two ways to do this in class. When looking at this, this would require two iron ions and three oxide ions. Since it specifies this is a solid, we could also give it these symbols. I'll erase the information for the ion charges because that really only helps us determine the products Fe2O3 in this case or iron 3 oxide. Notice this is a skeleton equation and not a balanced equation. We can see that there is one iron atom on the left side but two on the right side. Again, this is because this is a skeleton equation and not a balanced equation. Let us look at one more example of skeleton equations. Looking for the keywords, we can separate the reactants from the products. We see the term reacts tells us that aluminum metal and hydrochloric acid are our reactants. And the term produces tells us hydrogen gas and aqueous aluminum chloride are our products. Beginning with the reactants, the metal known as aluminum is simply an element for aluminum. We can assume aluminum to be a solid since most metals are solids. It states that it reacts with hydrochloric acid and the formula for hydrochloric acid was provided so let's simply use that. We now have the reactant symbols. The product symbols we will need formulas for hydrogen gas which is the element hydrogen as mentioned before, we need to be careful. Hydrogen is one of the elements we consider a genuine element, a simple way to remember which elements are diatomic. Aluminum chloride is an ionic compound made of two ions, the aluminum ion with a three plus charge and the chloride ion with a one minus charge. Therefore, to write the formula for this to arrive at a net charge of zero, it would require three chloride ions to balance against the one aluminum ion. Additional information could be added, such as the aqueous symbols for aluminum chloride and the gas symbol for hydrogen. One of the keys to writing skeleton words, excuse me, one of the keys to writing skeleton equations from words is to know how to consult ion charges and convert ion charges into formulas for ionic compounds. This skill was covered in a number of lessons previous to this particular unit.